close that and letting everyone in. Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. tonight Hello everybody. Painting a fox tonight. <laughs> Nice to see such a great group. Yeah. So we're waiting for a few to uh, few to join here uh, from the waiting room. There's we just have a few reminders. Uh, many of you probably heard this a million times, but uh, so we, um, I guess, if you're unfamiliar with if this is your first time uh, and you're not familiar with who. Uh, we are or who Jeff is. Jeff's been painting professionally for about 20 years and uh, we just recently started doing these free classes just a few months ago um, and we've been doing we've actually been doing classes for about you know a little over a year I think but um, anyways how kind of how these classes work uh, so these are uh, recorded and we will put them up on YouTube for anyone to watch back if you're uh, if you miss something you want to go back or if you're unable to join um, have to leave early for whatever reason you can go back and and watch anything that you may have missed um, so those and I'll send that out after the class um, usually a few days later um, and then so just for uh, for simplicity's sake, and because we have such a large volume of uh, people, participants on this uh, class, we just encourage everyone to use the, uh, the chat feature. Uh, so we just keep everyone muted. Um, and then um, if you have a question, I'll be watching that, monitoring that the whole time. You can just use the, uh, the chat feature and I'll get your questions answered. So that is that's everything from me. Cool. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. Uh, again, thank everybody for uh, uh, um, coming tonight. So one of the things that we do with this class is we keep everything very simple. We would rather you take something home, uh, take some knowledge home, so that next time when you approach a painting or you're going to go to paint, you're not afraid. There's a lot of fear that goes into art um, from everywhere from um, wasting paint, wasting time, and the fact that maybe the painting won't turn out. So what we try to do is um, simplify this class so much and uh, make art easy and approachable so that going forward, it is um, something that everybody can uh, start doing without any fear. So one of the things that we're gonna do just to uh, simplify it. Now, you saw the quick painting on Instagram of the fox being done. So we're gonna paint that fox tonight, but uh, we're gonna simplify it into some basic shapes. And if you have a pencil and paper, um, just scratch paper, you can write on your bills, whatever. Um, maybe you wanna save that. It'll turn out so good, you'll go, I'm gonna frame my bill here. And then the company never gets paid and you lose internet. But uh, <laughs> yeah, just something to, to uh, draw with. It can be pencil. I'm actually gonna use a, a broken piece of charcoal. And um, if you get a chance, I wanna recommend buying some, just some willow charcoal. Uh, it's a little stick of charcoal. They're usually about three inches long. I end up breaking them up and using the side a lot. But uh, we're gonna do some quick sketches of the fox. And what we're gonna do is create memory muscle of drawing the fox. So we're gonna keep doing that, um, do it maybe five, 10 times. And all of a sudden we're gonna know exactly the proportions of this fox. And now when we approach the painting, um, we're comfortable approaching it and we'll be able to um, place the paint on the canvas with confidence. All right, so if you think about that fox, um, if you remember, uh, hey Jake, I wonder 
Can I send this to you? Sure. Can you just put it up on the... Just screen share it? Yeah. All right. My screen share privileges have been revoked. <laughs> it's for your own good, Jeff. I know. <laughs> All right. You should have it. All right. Just a sec here. All right. Did it come through? Yes. Here it cool. is. All right. So we're going to break down the shape of him to a rectangle, a triangle, and a circle. Now, if you look at his back up to um, his shoulders, basically that right there is a rectangle. It's, it's got some curves on it, but uh, if we think of it just only as a um, rectangle, now it's pretty easy to draw. Uh, the tail and the, and the leg, we're gonna adjust that just a little bit to kind of make it more, uh, more friendly towards um, drawing and also uh, more towards painting also. We're gonna actually gonna draw a front leg in there with that black leg and it'll help balance out the painting. But then if you think about on top of that rectangle, go the two points from shoulder to shoulder, going up straight up to the top of the ears, I hope you see a triangle. And of course his head is just gonna be a simple circle. So we're gonna, um, we, we're not gonna, we're not gonna hang on to the painting or the picture too long because that can distract the actual process of having fun with painting. But we get the basic idea of what we're going to draw now. So what does that look like on paper? You can take that image down. And so really what we have, we have our the back of them. Remember his tail is down here. We have that triangle and we have the circle. Oh, I get, he looks like a bird. <laughs> I'll bring this up forward a little bit so you can see that. How's that? So again, there's our triangle, or our rectangle. Here's our triangle, and we have our circle. So just, just do a couple times, draw it out. We can put our, his ears on there. We just want to get comfortable with that shape. We just took the intimidation of the actual drawing of the, or the actual picture of the fox, and we broke it down to this simple shapes, or these simple shapes, and that's something we all can draw. And so maybe at one point, one of us has said, or we have said, I can't draw a stick figure. Well, all we have to do is draw a circle, a square, and a triangle, and we have our fox. Just this right here, um, we're already winning the game. So let's just do it a few more times. Just do, you can do small ones, do big ones. Oh, I used up my paper already. Let me do a let me do a new sheet. So again, we have our rectangle. We got our triangle. Now I do come off. This tells me where the, the ears are gonna go up here. So from here, I draw the circle. And his snout 
is something like this. So is that making sense for everybody? Pretty simple. Now we have the head, which is that circle. It comes down, comes straight out. It actually comes back a hair and then head back in. Circle comes out. Matter of fact, you can draw in that little nose already, a little square right on the tip. And uh, we're getting closer to understanding that fox. And if you want, there's a little eye. We're just gonna keep drawing parts of him over and over again. Again, we're gonna get, we're, what we're doing is um, just like you would go to the gym and work out and build your muscles up. We're actually building um, muscle, memory muscle. And so we're just getting um, high, uh, hand eye coordination in place. So, Draw that little nose in. Um, his ears go here. You can do put his ears either way like that. So we've got the circle. We can draw the ears in right away. We'll color those nice, dark and, uh, nice and dark. We have that snout that comes out, cuts back the hair, and it's kind of like a, maybe a cup. Think of the shape of a cup right here. As soon as we put that little black dot in there, we start seeing the fox a little closer, right? So this, the nose comes up here, cuts back, right in that area. You can make kind of like a little T, a sideways T, letter T. We're getting closer to that guy, aren't we? Yeah, if you want me to slow down, um, definitely remind me. So again, that we see that circle. And this will be the hardest part of the whole fox. And of course, when we start painting, um, all of our mistakes will be able to cover up pretty easily. Here's my triangle. Here's my.
Here's a little uh, drawing tip. Um, just let your hand move freely. Um, you'll, you'll actually do better. Let me give you an example. You'll actually do better if you keep your hand moving. And because we just keep doing them over and over again, we will have some nice ones and we will have some bad ones. And that's okay. Um, the more we practice, the more um, we're gonna start realizing what to um, keep doing and what to stop doing. And that's just how um, we edit ourselves. And so just keep doing it over and over again and pretty soon we're going to say, oh, this, this makes sense when I do this. This doesn't make sense. Or this is frustrating. Or this does not work when I do this. And so just that, that simple idea of practice makes us better. And uh, practice doesn't make perfect because that means that we finished our um, job. Practice makes us better. And now we get to move on to the next thing that we want to learn. So always keep practicing. You see that uh, how quickly it becomes a fox. How's everybody doing? So again, that, that freestyle of, of drawing, don't take your, your pencil or your charcoal off the paper and just keep your hand in motion. Jenny says hers looks a little bit like a pig. <laughs> there might be a few adjustments to make on that. That's funny enough. Just don't add a curly tail. <laughs> yeah, then, it, then for sure it is. <laughs>
you're using uh, uh, actually whether you're using charcoal or um, a pencil, start out real light and just kind of move your hand around. The last thing you want to worry about is if it's correct. Because um, one thing, if you look at foxes, you know, many, many pictures of foxes, or really any animal, rarely are they going to be exactly the same. Also, each through the year, because uh, their coat's changing, wet, the, the season's changing, they're going to keep evolving also. So sometimes they're going to look scrawny. Uh, grayish, brownish, um, with very little red on them. So um, there's a lot of room for, um, you know, a lot of room for just kind of freelancing our drawing. Let me ask you, are there any questions? Might have to put it in the chat. Come on, it doesn't look like a pig. <laughs> so at the end of the class, you know, it's it, it it's just natural because of who we are as humans. Um, we're gonna look at everybody else's and we're gonna think, boy, I wish mine looked like theirs. Look at how amazing they did. And guess what? They're looking back at you and they're thinking the same thing. Look at how nice her, hers or his is. I wish mine could look like that. Um, problems with the snout. So if you think about, you want to have, there it is right there. So think of a drinking glass, but the one thing is at the bottom here, it does kind of slightly come back. Put that little nose in there. So that all. Yes, yeah, so if, if you think about it, um, so we're gonna have it just come back a little bit. So there it is, looking like glass. So it comes down, comes back just a hair, and then goes down. And just like a, a drinking glass, it kind of um, gets wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. Same thing with his snout. Like I said, there's some that you like and some that you don't. <laughs> uh, 
Oh, good. Uh, Michelle said that helped. Oh, good. Good. So that's good. And actually, when it's looking like this drinking glass here, we're going to have a little square right here for his nose. And we're going to have it come down a line like this. This will actually be a little bit darker right here. Ice cube with straw. There, oh, there you go. Nice. <laughs> Is that the lime wedge? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the mind sees what it wants to. <laughs> Freudian, Freudian <Exactly>. slip. <laughs> so once we start painting, it'll be a lot easier to edit because using the paint, we can move it around, push it back and forth and uh, make observations and adjustments with it. But right now it's just really, um, again, simplifying that subject. We have the, the rectangle, we have a triangle with a circle right here. We have that cup coming off. This down here, we can just have a fun with that. How's everybody doing? So I won't, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is a, a more complicated subject. And that's why um, in your mind, keep breaking down the shapes. Hey Jake, can we pull up the fox one more time? Sure. So I took the picture of the fox and I had to edit it in a program. Um, that's why you're seeing how those marks around him just to get rid of all the details. So if you wanted, here's a little detail. We have our rectangle, right? But it kind of comes, kind of rounds off on the top. And if we think about that triangle, it goes up from there. Actually, we can follow, put that line all the way down. You want me to keep the fox up for now? Yeah, so I'm the, um, our memory will look at it kind of uh, get the basic idea in your mind. Notice little details. Um, and we're gonna use our memory 
So if I'm going to paint a subject, I'll look at the subject. I'll pick out the, the details that identify it as a fox. Then I um, put the picture away and basically keep drawing him, um, repeating the, the drawing over and over again until I feel comfortable with the shapes. Now I can go and paint and now I can apply paint in a confident way because I'm, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable with the, I'm confident with um, how the shapes of a fox play out. So there you go. We are gonna do, we are gonna, um, you can see here in the picture that um, he has his back legs kind of filling in the area right there. But what we're gonna actually do is put in one of his dark front legs in the front too. And the reason we're gonna do that is um, it's gonna take the two dark ears, the darkness in the front of his face, and now we're gonna bring it down to the bottom of him to uh, create a third dark area. All right, so how is everybody feeling? Are you ready to paint? Did you, uh, before we start real quick, did you see that there's a couple comments? Oh. This, uh, let's see here. Oh, Lisa said she was, I don't know if you addressed these or not. Uh, Lisa said she yes. was having a little trouble with the ears. Okay. Yeah, so the, then, I'm drawing his ears the other way. So in the picture, you'll see that the ear in the back is behind the front ear. But uh, I've been sketching them and I've been um, putting that front or that back ear in the front. Hmm. Okay, so oh. they wanna, you can take that picture down now. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so the right side of the triangle is becoming his shoulder, yes. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah. So if you wanted to get the, it, de it depends on, um, this is just a zoom thing. I think there's a, there's a slider when I sh screen share something, if you wanted Jeff as like the main thing and then the Fox is the smaller thing. Um, I don't know if that's possible on the iPads and uh, tablets and stuff. Anyways, that's beside the point. Um, there we are going to, right now we get the basic foundation. We've at least practiced it. We kind of get the idea of, of where things go. So once we start painting, um, again, you are the creator. So you are going to do the editing with the Fox. Um, I'm open to, if you wanna um, show your picture, uh, I'll get, actually, um, we'll definitely do that, but one thing, um, we're going to discuss is how we want to edit. So kind of really make an impression in your mind how the spots looked or looks. And we are going to just walk slowly through the process. Okay. So we won't go fast. If I am going too fast, just ask to um, have me slow down. But uh, I think once we get going, you are gonna see that um, it's easy to um, paint and it's easy to edit. So once we start painting, we do not want to like our painting. The reason why is because soon as we start liking our painting, that's when we're gonna get up there and start doing the little um, fidgeting and um, nitpicking each little detail. Apply the paint, leave it. Um, apply it with confidence. And I'll give you some examples of that. Matter of fact, a second here. Real quick, Jeff, did you see Barb's comment or question? No. Uh, oh, she just put, so the right uh, side of the triangle 
is becoming his shoulder. Yes. Yep. Yep. Keep the questions and uh, keep the questions coming. All right. Um, so I'm going to squirt some pain out. I usually work with a very uh, minimal um, palette. This is a Indian yellow. And of course you can see that that will work nicely with the fur of the fox. Um, here is a cadmium red light. Again, another great color for the fox. But then I'm going to use some primaries. So I'm going to have my cyan blue. Now, if you don't have a cyan blue, that's no problem. Any blue is going to work. Uh, you will get a different shade, but that's not a problem. That's actually gonna be a good thing. That's gonna be in your favor because you are, um, you're gonna see how color works and plays against each other, but it will work out. So I have my magenta and now my, um, I'm gonna use cadmium yellow light uh, the true primary is lemon yellow, but lemon yellow has very low pigment. And so it's hard to uh, mix colors. You have to use, like if you're gonna make an orange and you, you take a, just a, the magenta is very powerful, high um, pigment. The lemon yellow is very weak, low pigment. Good, still a good quality paint, but they just don't, it does, it's not a strong pigment. So you end up taking a tiny amount of magenta and a lot of lemon yellow to make orange. So I like the cadmium yellow light. It's very similar, uh, but it has a stronger pigment in it. I'm also gonna wear gloves. Um, and the reason why is that, uh, if you paint regularly with oils, and I really, I think any paint, whether it's acrylic or watercolor, uh, a lot of the pigments are not healthy. So if you're just painting, starting out, no worries. You'll have some fun cleaning your hands later tonight. But uh, <laughs> no worries. All right, so, um, I was, uh, I was saying earlier that you do not want to light your painting. So what does that mean? I'm gonna give you an example. I'm actually going to very roughly draw out my fox with paint. So I'm gonna take, I'll take uh, some Indian yellow, some um, cadmium yellow light, just a little bit of that just kind of create my fox color there. All right, so I got my circle here, right? Triangle. So let's see here. Someone mentioned uh, cobalt blue or ultramarine blue. So cobalt blue is going to be warm. Ultramarine is going to be cool. So those are the, uh, blue is a cool color, but when you um, look at it as a cool color, cobalt is going to be warmer, whereas ultramarine is going to be cooler. Cobalt is going to lean towards a green, whereas ultramarine is going to lean towards the magenta or red. And either one will work. We're gonna be using our blue 
um, to make our black and also our gray oranges. So you may have noticed that we don't have any black on our palette. Oh, I do want some white though. See, someone mentioned, uh, what if, what do you use if you don't have Indian yellow? Um, do you have a, in, uh, depending on what type of paint you have, what brand you have, if you have a yellow medium or a yellow dark, that will work also. Uh, if you don't have those, even an ochre will work. Just throw a little bit of, um, of your red in there. Again, you see what I'm doing? I, I'm just, I don't care if I go way over here with my orange. I'm just kind of sketching out this guy. All right. Uh, someone asked, uh, should we be painting along? Let's see. Should we be painting right now as you are, or are just waiting to see the, the um, portion? Or the seeds portion? You're getting the basic idea of, of uh, how it's going to work. So if you want to start painting along, go ahead. Um, something to take note of, though, is where his ears are is going to be where the top of that triangle is. So right down the center. Here, here's the middle section of, of the painting. So we're gonna have them come down. So the beauty of not liking your painting right now and just scraping that paint um, on there, you get to, um, first of all, you're not carrying, but you also get to move the paint around until you start seeing the fox. So uh, uh, let's say I have, I go way too far out on his shoulder. For whatever reason, I'm way out here with the shoulder. Oh man, that, that's way off. It, it doesn't even look like the fox anymore. I think I ruined my painting. Anybody feeling that way? All right, this is all you have to do. Grab a, grab a little bit of white and edit it. Now I went too far in. <laughs> <laughs> so that's you did not ruin it so um make the basic sketch of the fox if you need to edit edit um matter of fact hey jake since the foundation is so important would you throw the fox image up just one more time sure and then you can just kind of check your proportions And again, we're not trying to duplicate him exactly, but uh, we do want to kind of get a couple of things that are accurate and everything else will just uh, fill in. Maybe uh, as you're sketching that out, we'll just let it be up there for a minute or two.
again, think, be thinking about the rectangle, that triangle, the circle, and that cup. Now notice how far back the bottom of that cup comes back. So um, he come, it comes down, hits the nose, and it actually comes back 20 degrees. Hey, Jake. Yeah. Um, actually, will you take it off for a second? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to show them a quick little trick for getting that face right. All right. So, um, I'm going to go from the tip of his nose right here back to the top of his head. Right there is going to be where the eyes are. Notice this little dip right here. So there is a strong round shape right there. That's where that circle is. But from here, it just goes straight out. Um, you can see where it dips in. Kind of has this angle right here. And this angle here. I don't know if that helped or not. But if you draw a line from the very tip of his nose to the top of his head, um, you'll see where that little dip is in order to make it um, to make it accurate. And again, you can see, I do not like my painting, so I'm willing to do whatever to make the the foundation of the painting perfect. And if you're already getting mud from the, your palette knife. <laughs> and all those colors blending together. Uh, um, as you add layers of paint, kind of just hold back a little bit on the pressure or how hard you're pushing on the, um, the canvas with your palette knife. I actually, my palette knife, when it has paint on it and there's paint on the canvas, they just barely kiss each other. And then I slide my palette knife sideways. So I can keep, with that process, I can literally keep building up um, color on top of each other without it turning into mud. Connie, do you have a comment or a question? Oh, there's a, did you blue on, oh, did you put blue on the ears, I think? Yeah, I did. <laughs> oh, uh, so what do you Jimmy mean asked... by mud? Yeah, good question. Great question. Um, so here are our three primaries that cyan, blue, magenta, and ye lemon yellow, but I'm using cadmium yellow light. Those are our three primaries. And of course, if we mix um, magenta and yellow together, we get orange. If we mix uh, blue and yellow together, we get green. And if we mix the magenta and blue together, we get purple. So those are our secondary colors. Actually, here's a, let's do this real quick. There's red. As people are sketching out, you know what I should have done? Here, let's do this. There's our red, um, here's our blue, and there's our yellow. 
So those are three primaries. Of course, if we mix yellow and um, magenta together, we're going to get orange. And of course, if I add more red, I'm going to get a redder color. If I add more yellow, I'm going to get a um, orange color or more, even a, a light yellow. If we mix yellow and green together, or blue, we get our green. And um, we want our purple. Right there, there's the color wheel. So um, remember our three primary colors? If we take, let's say yellow, um, if we go across the wheel, we get purple, right? So if we mix these two together, we're gonna get a mud. If we take our blue and we go across, um, straight across, we come to our orange. If we mix those two together, we're going to get a mud. And if we take our red, go across, we come to green. And if we uh, mix those two together, we're gonna get a mud. Now, why are we getting mud? It's because we're, we're mixing all three primaries together. So obviously we know if we, we mix our red and blue together, we get purple. But now if we add the third color in, yellow, the third primary, now we're gonna get a gray, muddy color. And do not be afraid of the grays or the muds. They are gonna become your best friend as you keep painting. Kind of like Jake and I, Jake's the mud. <laughs> um, if you think about like a, a movie, if you if you compare the arts, there's going to be a lot of um, repeating patterns. So let's just think of a movie. Um, we'll usually have our main characters, Romeo and Juliet. Um, all of the other characters in that movie. So our main characters are our primaries. All the other characters in that movie are the grades. Those gray colors support the primary colors. So when we get into that, that clean mud on our fox, not clean mud, I'm going, my brain's going mushy. The, the clean colors on our fox, the grays are going to enhance those clean colors and really make them stand out. So that's why we want to uh, come to enjoy and appreciate gray, muddy colors. Let's see. All right, That's how's just, everybody doing? Any other questions? It looks like we got one. Will a yellow ochre take place for the Indian yellow? Yes. Definitely. So what you want to do, um, just so it gets closer to that Indian yellow, um, just like what we just discussed in here, if you look at the Indian yellow, it's actually pretty orange. So how would we get that color? Look at this. Here's our orange right here. Very similar to our Indian yellow. The difference is going to be that Indian yellow is a transparent paint. So it's, it's usually used for tinting colors, um, whereas the orange is going to have more of a uh, opaque pigment in it. So you just have to be careful with that, but it will work. It'll definitely work. So what I would do is just take that ochre yellow, add a little bit of magenta in there, a little bit of your red. And mix it together, and you should get a, 
a nice color, you'll probably get something similar to the color on the back of the fox. I'm gonna keep um, shaping my fox here. I just mixed my first mud color right there. And I'm pushing it into his back. See how I'm taking just baby steps into the fox? So I'm not trying to create the masterpiece right away. I don't like my painting, so I'm, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get things right. And sometimes what I mean by right is what's right in my imagination. So if you have a black, um, no problem. The only thing I would recommend is add a blue or the mag uh, yeah, magenta in with the black. What it's gonna do is give it a more natural, um, a more natural uh, color compared to that stark black. But if you're using the same colors I am, I'll show you uh, where I'm going to get my black. I'm going to take my cyan blue and some cadmium red light. And I'm going to get a nice dark, nice dark black color. And it'll be closer to a natural nature's black. Now, if you don't have uh, those two colors, if you have a burnt umber in your arsenal of colors um, and a blue, mix those two together. If you take a warm black or a warm color and a cool color, and they're both dark, you should get a pretty good black. We got a question, what colors uh, on the shoulder? Or what color is on the shoulder? I just took some of my, uh, Natural black again. Mixed it, rubbed it into my um, orange back. Again, I'm just building up colors. I'm hoping for some happy accidents. Thank you, Bob Ross. Uh, those little happy accidents um, really are going to add the interest in the painting. So Bob Ross could not have been more accurate in helping us create a beautiful painting. Sometimes it's those little happy accidents that uh, make the painting. And what's cool about, or what, where this comes from, the foundation of it, the Renaissance painters, um, of course they were a little more God-fearing than our modern world. And so they recognize their um, imperfect, imperfect position in life. And so they would, to represent that imperfection of themselves, to realize that they're just humans, they would actually leave imperfections in their painting on purpose. 
And it was just a, a, a humble gesture to show that they are just human beings. And I love that concept, that, um, that idea behind that. And you can imagine the viewers knowing that about that artist, that he purposely is being a humble artist, they would have empathy for the painting and for the artist. And so um, it was a little detail that made people have affection for the artist and for his paintings. So it's just kind of a cool little um, foundation to what Bob Ross was saying as far as those happy little accidents or those little things that aren't perfect, but they end up making the painting very interesting looking. What I did with this tail is um, took some of the cadmium red light, grabbed a little bit of my mud, my dark mud here, pushed them together. You can see I got kind of a dark brick oven, dark, uh, uh, dark sienna color. But I threw that in this tail. I kind of like how that looks. So I'm going to do a little bit of that in, in his back. If you recall that fox, he wasn't, there was actually, actually only a couple areas on his back that were actually a pure color. And I'm referring to the orange. Um, oh, so I, I'm pointing the tip of the tail back here. Let me put a little.
that help with that tail? So we're gonna throw it back here. So again, I don't like my painting. I'm just going in here and roughly sketching out um, the shape of that fox. And don't worry if uh, if you're if he looks like he needs to go on a diet. Um, just do that editing. Uh, give him a little weight loss training there. Um, if he's, uh, I'm trying to think of an example of uh, if he's looking too long or too short. Do something drastic now to edit the fox. Um, is anybody having fun just letting the colors blend together and uh, seeing the beautiful colors that come out of it? I think that's one of my favorite parts of this, this way of painting because uh, um, it, it's, it, you, you learn a lot about color as you sit there and push that color around and into each other, you see how it interacts. Um, sometimes it'll, if you um, do it with the white, you'll see how this um, orange yellow color starts starting to get very warm like the sun. If you go into the blue, you start seeing how it gets dark. But if you think about that, uh, that fox, he had a lot of dark shades on him. And that's all I'm doing right now is creating those dark shades uh, with him. All right, so I'm gonna tell you a little secret of what I just did. So we could try to keep creating this realistic looking fox, but I love color. So I got magenta and some white. So I more white than magenta. Um, you can kind of see that color right here. And I came, and they start forming the bottom of him. So you're not really necessarily seeing a magenta, but subconsciously that color is going to be in my fox. And he's gonna add some really cool um, perspective in that painting.
So you can kind of see it right here. You see how fun that makes him? I don't add a lot. You, you want it more to be an off-white paint. We could do add that a little bit of in his tail here. All right, let's, let's actually stop for a second. Um, stand up and stand back from your painting about six to eight feet. So this, this is actually gonna tell you more. It feels good to stand too. This is gonna tell you more about how your painting is turning out than um, anything else. So when you're up close painting your animal or your fox or your subject, whatever you're gonna do, um, you're looking at parts that are coming together. And so while we're putting all those parts together, we start getting critical of it and um, fidgeting with it, trying to fix things with it. Standing up and standing back six to eight feet, now we can see the painting as a whole. So now we can see how all the parts are starting to come together. We can always fix that tail. Don't worry about that, Michelle. <laughs> um, now you can kind of just see a better picture of where the fox is going. And you also can make better judgments of how you might need to edit him. Now, another way you can do this, or another, um, Another uh, means that you can kind of edit your, or see how you, what you need to do to edit your painting is look at your painting through your phone camera. So look on your phone as it's pointed at the, the fox. Or if you have a handheld mirror, you can look to the mirror backwards at your, at your fox. And again, I'm not, right now I'm not um, at layers. I'm just pushing colors around. So I could grab a little bit of white and right here, just come and work that white right into that yellow. I'm gonna step away just for a sec, Jeff. All right. All right. So just keep, remember we don't like our painting. Do not like your painting. And now that gives you more liberty to just have fun with them. I mean, if you mix, um, uh, let's see here. Let's create a crazy color. Let's take magenta and a little bit of, um, cadmium red light. Let's mix that. Let's grab some yellow too, as long as it's right there. Oh man, that is a, a whole new color. And it is a beautiful color. So you could actually take this, just start working it in there. And really that's, what, we get, what we're getting are those happy accidents that Bob Ross talked about. Just little subtle. So I'm gonna edit underneath them. You know, 
edit up here to get rid of my drawing. How's everybody doing? Am I going too fast? Um, sometimes I get into the, I'm having so much fun painting that I start, I keep going and I forget that we're on Zoom and I have people watching me. <laughs> but that's a great feeling, getting lost in your painting. So I'm just using, again, I'm using small amounts and just letting the, kind of just rubbing that paint around in there. If it's not too late, if you're wondering how I got this nice glow, it's three colors. It's the um, lemon yellow or cadmium yellow light, my Indian yellow, and my white. And of course, up on his chest here, I added that pink and work that into the yellows also. If you're using the palette knife, hang on to your palette knife with the tips of your fingers. This will help because if you hold on to it like it's a knife, now you're going to be stabbing the painting and your knuckles are going to drag through your paint. So if you hold on to it with the tips of your fingers, you can see how now you can get right up to the canvas and your hand and everything else is behind there, but you're able to use the whole edge of the blade. And again, when I, I have paint on the canvas and I have paint on my palette knife, um, I actually come up and just 
let them kiss each other. I put no pressure on the um, canvas at all. The two paints kiss, and then I slide mine, slide my palette knife sideways. Lena, you're gonna have to hold on just a minute because I think Jake went and took a nap. Feel well rested now. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's see here. Um, here you go, Jeffrey. And oh, man, Lena, you are becoming such an amazing artist. Look at that, you even drew his face head on. <gasps> so <laughs> you are getting so good, I can't believe it. That's awesome. Super unique. Definitely has its own uh, style to that, that painting. I really like that. I had all those dark colors on my um, fox, and now I'm going to start pushing towards the light. All right, let's see here. Hope I'm saying this right. Corinna wants to show her painting here. Um, all right. You want it? <laughs> I do. You're going to make them buy it. Sold. Big, big money. Here's, a, here's another one, Jeff. All right. Let's see. Add yeah, spotlight. Oh, very oh cool. beautiful, Karina. Look at, look at all the um, variety of shades of uh, orange yep. in her fox. Are you using watercolor? Or acrylic? Or just, uh, I think it's acrylic. Looks like it might be acrylic. Uh, uh, gouache. Oh, I love gouache. Gouache. Interesting. Yep. So it's it's a, something similar. It's in between a watercolor and acrylic paint. And mm -hmm. a lot of oil artists are switching over to gouache. Really? Yep, it has a lot to offer. Interesting. I miss that. Oh, Jelena. 
You just have to remind us. Am I saying that right, Jelena? So how again do you edit it if it is, if the uh, if it is too fat tail out of control? So um, you can do if it's too high this way. Just come in with a, a dark orange and just kind of bring it down a little bit. Just pull that paint down, reshape it. Um, So um, are you having fun just kind of shaping him a little bit? Uh, applying paint, pushing it around, scraping it off, um, going back and forth. We're just kind of um, getting our thoughts to come um, together. So again, we still do not like our our painting. Thanks for joining, Lena. Thank you, Lena. Um, right now, uh, you might be looking, trying to follow along with what I'm doing. Uh, I promise you will be happier with your painting if you, um, cause you see what I'm doing. I'm mixing red oranges. I'm mixing clean oranges. I'm mixing dark, uh, muddy oranges. And I just keep applying them, moving them around, scraping them off, putting them back on. Um, if you just keep start playing that same little game that I'm playing, as far as um, playing with the paint like this, 
and now you start making your own judgments, you are you will be happier with your fox. And um, in my mind, I'm I'm doing everything that makes sense to me. But I want you to start um, doing things that make sense to you. That's way more important as you for you to progress as an artist. So you can sit and try to copy and copy and copy um, everything that I'm doing, but it'll be way easier if you just do it in a manner that makes sense to you. One thing um, I do hope you notice though, is that I apply the paint and rarely come back and fidget with it. I just, I leave it on there until I make a decision not to have it on there. But right now I'm just applying paint. Um, again, still shaping, I'm starting to add a layer. So my tech, my pressure is starting to lighten up. And so, um, uh, that allows me to take a new color and go over the top, but I'm also loving how the dark muddy colors are staying down below and just, just lightly poking through my new colors. And again, it allows for that, that shaping or the molding of, uh, of the fox. Paint is just a fun to kind of discover what the paint's going to do. So as you sit there and move things around, um, again, Bob Ross uh, told us about these happy accidents. And so that's what we're just trying to do is let the happy accidents take over and um, then we become we start to become more uh, judicious in how we, what we keep and what we get rid of with all of those accidents.
does anybody remember when we talked about uh, the complementary colors and um, the colors that are across the color wheel? And when we mix them together, they become mud. Um, if we don't mix them together, they actually enhance each other. So does anybody recall what was across the wheel from our orange? Because this is going to help us decide how we're going to make our next colors. Yes. Excellent, Beth. So what I'm doing is I'm taking um, white, a little bit of blue. I'm trying to get a nice, a nice light um, blue lavender color. So I did mix in a little bit of magenta, but here I have this nice blue color, which is the complement of orange. And so I'm going to place that in a few areas around my painting. But do you see what happened? It just really made um, that painting or fox come to life. It shouldn't even be legal to have this much fun with color. All right, here's just a little interesting tidbit. The reason why our colors are all working in harmony is um, we're staying with a limited palette. And so it's just a nice way to um, create a harmonious painting. Anybody frustrated? Okay, you're gonna you're gonna hate me for this, but good. Frustration is 
your second best friend in art. <laughs> so um, I'm having a lot of fun. I'm confident with my, how I'm mixing my colors and moving it around. But I, you have to remember, I, I, I paint every day. I painted many foxes. So I've had the time to work out some of the frustrations, right? So now you're starting out and um, you're facing some challenges and it becomes frustrating. What if you painted this guy again? What are some things that you might do differently? Um, what if you painted him 10 times or painted uh, foxes 10 times? Now that the color is in him, uh, you'll start taking chances like the pink or even that blue. Uh, you start just having fun because um, you're almost showing off to yourself uh, how much fun you can have with these colors. And that's really where painting gets uh, gets fun. That's where um, you realize that there's so much to learn in art and it is an endless pursuit and it is um, so satisfying to do. Even if you don't do it as a career, um, if you only do it as something, as a, a hobby, a pastime, um, you will find it very satisfying. You will have lots of frustration, guaranteed, but um, you will get past the frustration and you'll come out, you actually hit a wall. Maybe you've heard of writer's block or artist block. You hit that wall and nothing happens and you hate art. You will work through it. And on the other side of that wall, you will come out 10 times better. That's one of the satisfying things of art. So if we actually did this guy again, and it, if we have time, we, we should consider, uh, we might not have enough time. Um, if we get done in about half hour, 40 minutes, maybe we'll do a quick 15 minute fox. The same fox, but we're only gonna have 15 minutes to uh, uh, paint him. Uh, if we have time to do that, you'll see that you will actually paint better because now you have to rely on your own intuition. Right now you're kind of following along with, with what I'm doing, but you already have the foundation. You have, you saw what I did and, um, and, and maybe you tried to mimic it, but it was frustrating. And it's just because it's, it's just a new experience. When we paint fast in 15 or 20 minutes, you have to completely rely on your own intuition. And you completely forget about, well, you know, I shouldn't say that. You remember the things I did, but now you, your brain interprets it and you, you paint um, what your brain interprets. And so we'll, we'll all get completely different foxes, completely different paintings, but that's just because we're all different. We all create differently. Again, one of the cool things about art, uh, if you've taken the classes before, you most likely heard the story of for 30 some years, I did not think I was an artist and I was embarrassed to show my paintings um, up until, I should say up until about 30 years old uh, because I didn't paint like what I thought art should be. I looked at other artists and compared myself and um, I thought, I'm not an artist because I can't paint like so-and-so. And so what I was painting, um, I was embarrassed of, but I liked them. And a friend saw them, encouraged me to take them to a gallery to get their opinion on them. He liked them, but he thought, just go get their opinion on them. I brought them to the gallery and the gallery liked them. So what's the moral of the story? I was painting what made sense to me and not trying to be like other artists. Okay, do you want even a better example? Van Gogh, he was painting completely different from the way everybody else was painting at that time. Uh, Picasso, completely different from how everybody else was painting at that time. Jackson Pollock, Andy Warhol, uh, Basquiat, uh, 
you name it. You, if you think of your most famous, the, your favorite famous artist, they painted differently than everybody else. And that's why people recognize them. Um, they had their own unique style. They painted what made sense to them. They had fun with it and people liked it. So we have to get past that idea that our art isn't good because it doesn't look like somebody else's. And uh, Jake, if you get a second, um, if, you're, if you're new to the classes, um, you, you will appreciate this. If you've taken it before, you've, you've uh, heard this, or you've seen this before. Would you find a picture of Joan Mitchell? Yeah. One of her, her paintings? So remember how I felt about my art. I, I just, I was embarrassed about it. And I'm standing in a uh, bookstore and I find Joan Mitchell, not Joni Mitchell, the art, uh, singer, but Joan Mitchell, the artist. I found a book of hers. And I, it was just the whole universe stopped. And me in this book, looking at it, I came to the realization, I am an artist. Because if this is art, then I know I can do whatever I want and be and call it art. Now, however, um, there was a purpose in what she painted. And if you do a little research behind it, you will find it fascinating. But let's take a look at one of her paintings. Let's see here. Some reason it is not loading. All right, I got a bunch of them up here, but can't get the prices on them for some reason. Okay. Hmm. All right. You see the idea. <laughs> you can click on anyone because we can tell them the price of them. All right, yeah. Uh, for some reason, they're not, yeah, it's not loading. Sick. Technology. Let's, let me let me just zoom in here. Whoop. Hopefully you can see that all right. So obviously it's very abstract, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna tell you what she was trying to do, and it will make more sense. It's a garden. But do you see how she just applied the paint? Um so how, guess how much her paintings are worth. Jake, how much are her paintings worth? Uh, I'm trying to remember now. What, one of them, was it six million? Yep, six million. I think that's pretty average for hers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, how do you feel about your painting right now? Yeah, $6 million for one of her paintings. Now, again, going back to painting what makes sense to you, uh, she wanted to have an abstract garden. She just wanted it to be all about color. And um, people loved it. Oh, wait. Here we go. So this one that we were looking at, I finally got it to load here. Not that it matters too much, but this one, oh, they say they, they could go for a total of 19 million. For the two of them. Two, for the two of them. Yeah. Okay. Jake, will you buy me that, buddy? Sure. <laughs> Who's your favorite <laughs> uncle? You know. Wait, don't I'll answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay it to you in IOUs. <laughs> I'll lend the money to you in IOUs. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I promise I'll always owe it to you. That's what I knew was coming. <laughs> That's when you know you're not going to get paid. I just learned from the best. <laughs> All right, so. How encouraging was that? 
So you just got to find your little way of painting. Paint in a way that makes sense to you. Make it beautiful. Um, color is, is such a, we just had two classes on color uh, in a course that we offer. And color is so powerful. I mean, it, you can control crowds with color. You can, restaurants will use warm colors in the restaurant because it stimulates our appetite and we order more food. So uh, there you go. After seeing uh, Joan Mitchell's paintings, now I, I can apply paint in any way that I want to apply it. And I can do it with confidence. Um, matter of fact, if you start applying paint with confidence, uh, even though you might not feel completely confident, I promise you're going to start liking your painting um, more. So obviously at this point, we are starting to, to like our painting. We're starting to make little marks that are making it more and more beautiful. It's just like building a house. Uh, the guy who comes in with the bulldozer doesn't care where you're gonna place your couch. Um, he's just going in, going in there to make room for the foundation. Guy pours the foundation, he doesn't care. Uh, not until you're getting done with it. The paint's going in, the carpet's going in, the floors are going in, uh, the couch is in place and you, finally put that last or your favorite pillow on the couch. Now the, the house is done. But up to that point, um, all of those details weren't important. They weren't important to any of those workers. So we get in here, we, we kind of keep moving paint around. Um, we're not caring, we're not liking about our painting. We're just trying to get the foundation right. But after a while, now we can start playing around and having some fun with it. All right, did I see somebody ask about the background color? Yeah, they're just uh, wondering if we're gonna add the background eventually. That's next week's course. No, just kidding. Um, so we have some options of what we wanna do. We can take our yellows and mix them with our blue and we, and, uh, we get a green. Um, we can add white in there. We can get a... a uh, a nice background, light background green. There's something else we can do, and it's gonna keep it a little more modern, but you can take all of your colors, blend them together. We're gonna get a, a nice muddy color, but now we add in um, more white to get a light gray color. And um, why this is, uh, something that we can do and why it will work is because we already have all of our colors right here, right? And now we take all of these colors, blend them together, put it in the background, and this is our supporting characters, supporting all of the colors in here. So it, maybe you'll, you'll see uh, paintings, they have that nice, uh, nice gray background. How did they get that gray? That's what they did. They, they mixed all their colors together, toned it to the, the, um, the intensity that they wanted with the white or dark. They wanted to keep it dark and um, finished in the background. So I think 
Um, or you could take a, just a solid color, uh, fill it in. You could do any of the colors, red, uh, blue, yellows. You could, uh, you could take Indian yellow and white and you'll get a beautiful golden warm color. I think I'm gonna go all in. I'm gonna mix all my colors together. Um, well, hang on a second before I say that. All right, so do you know what? I'm looking at my fox. I'm realizing I painted him with his back here, even though the image kind of has it just more as the, the back and the tail comes around and goes back like this. I'm looking at this and I think I want the, the um, end of the tail over here. So I'm gonna do something drastic. Yeah, I like that way better. So drastic changes <laughs> in order to make it better.
So as I'm adding the background color again, I'm editing my fox. Um, making any adjustments to add um, aesthetics to the, to the painting. I also decided to go with a green color, but I added in the red at the bottom. So it's still very green, but it creates this nice dark green, uh, more nature green. And I'm just gonna kind of work my way up. Um, I, there's, there is red in my mid-tone green here, but I'm just added a li little bit more white to lighten it up. But eventually, I'm going to get up here and get more into my um, Indian yellow warm color, kind of representing the sun up here.
Hey, Jeff. Uh, looks like Amelia wants to show hers real quick. Oh, sure. Let's see here. One sec. I just got to find you. Oh, there it is. All right. I'm going to add it to Spotlight. Here it is. Right here. Oh, awesome. Beautiful, Amelia. Yeah. Oh, Amelia, you captured the sun on the other side of him, lighting him up beautifully. Yeah, you did an excellent job with him. Yeah, that is beautiful. You did sell that one. And I'm not just saying that. Thank you for joining us tonight, Amelia. Keep painting. Hopefully we'll see you in the coming weeks. We got another question here. Can you help me with all of my colors fudged together? It looks like uh, mud. Oh, the shape of a dog. Looks like mud. The shape of a dog. All right, let's see, Joanna. All right, one sec here. Did you want to uh, show your show and I? Did you just want some? All right. You can you can hold it up. Don't be shy. <laughs> uh, here's uh, Joanna's uh, Jeff. She just wants some help with, uh, she says the colors are kind of smudged together. All right, here, right here. All right, so. Actually, do you know what? Uh, so are you using um, acrylics? All right, so ha has it dried? Oh, I lost her. Well, no, it hasn't. Oh, okay. So go in there and um, start using some pure colors and just move in them. Are you using a palette knife or a, a brush? Let's see here. OK, 
take a yellow. If you have orange, um, take that orange and uh, mix a little bit of red. Keep the, the orange, but then add um, two more spots of orange. So do three uh, little squirtles of orange. Add yellow to the first orange. Leave the um, orange, the original orange by itself, and then add a little bit of red to the third orange. And now you have three beautiful colors to create that fox. Actually, if you do a fourth um, or fourth um, squirt out of orange, mix in a little blue. So now you have four colors to start defining him. And don't the acrylics mix um, like oils, they'll kind of stay more separate than uh, acrylics? Um, or not? Uh, the, the acrylics will dry fast. Yeah. So you'll, um, once you put it on there, it'll dry within a couple minutes. So you want to, if you're going to like push the colors around, you might want to just start adding in little, if you look at mine, mine's just little color blobs. So, um, and I'm using different shades of color to kind of form him.
I'm going to step away for a sec again here, Jeff. All right. Actually, while he goes away, are there any questions? A giraffe. <laughs> cool, I'm glad that it worked out for you, Adenike. So if this is your first class, this was one of the more challenging ones. Um, last week we did a chicken and it was a lot simpler. Uh, we will do the bears again in the near future. A lot of people like doing the bears just because they're so simple and so much fun um, that everybody kind of gets to very easily create their own bear, but it turns out fantastic. So we'll, we'll, we'll have some challenge classes, but we'll also have some very easy ones. And the whole idea is to keep improving as an artist. And if you wanted, we could, if you have uh, another canvas, we could try that quick painting. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you're interested. I see one thumbs up. Let's see here. Um, what you'll really like about the quick painting, again, I said it earlier, you just did all the hard work right now in, in creating that fox. Um, Oh, Mariah, that is beautiful. Look at the fun you had with all the colors in the background. I'm jealous. But uh, um, yeah, so we have all of the, all of the um, foundation now where we can create a fox. And then maybe, maybe I'll, while we're waiting for Jake, let me show you something real quick. Right. So remember earlier, we talked, we broke it down into those basic shapes. We want to be able to create this fox.
All right. So look at how I simplified everything. And I just suggested the idea of the fox. You see that um, you get a you get quite a bit more fun fox. Now um, I'm actually making you use your imagination a little bit to make out the fox, right? So I'm suggesting the fox. It took me what a minute to do, but I'm able to say more with this fox than with the fox that took me uh, over two hours to paint. So why? Because the suggestion is, is more powerful than the reality. So the power of suggestion is greater than the statement of reality. So uh, here it comes, though, so if you've taken the class before, you've heard this, but this is such a cool, example of how a little will say so much. It'll say more than a lot. Uh, Ernest Hemingway was a, well, we all know Ernest Hemingway, famous American author. He was criticized for being a simpleton. Uh, the critics made fun of him, said that you don't need a dictionary to read a Hemingway book. He uses simple ideas and simple words. He knew that criticism of him. And so to a group of guys, his friends, some of his colleagues, he said, if I can make you cry using only six words, I want 10 bucks from each one of you. And of course they all laughed at him and said, sure. So he gave them these six words. And he, really, it is a novel written with only six words. So the, here's the six words. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. Well, all of his colleagues, his friends agreed that uh, uh, he accomplished it. They, gave, they all gave him his 10 bucks. He told a whole story. He wrote, he said, he told a whole novel with just six words. So it's not what he said, but what he, um, the, the, the story that we created in our minds. So he gave us just enough information. The rest of the story was created in our minds and think of how powerful that is. Well, that's what happens when we just do quick um, suggestive paintings like this. We're actually seeing more because now we get the viewer involved. If he would have wrote out the whole story about what happened, why the parents are selling these baby shoes, we get the whole story and we appreciate the story, but we, we don't necessarily get emotionally involved. Um, when you paint with the suggestive way, it gets the person emotionally involved compared to where it's, if it's a realistic painting, they're just cerebrally uh, involved with it. They might admire the skill. They might admire how you created it, the colors you used. But when there's just that suggestion, now it hits them on a whole new level. So that's the idea of this quick paint. We have to apply the paint. Oh, yes. We would love to see it. Is Jake back? Oh, he's back taking a nap. He's probably making a bologna sandwich right now. Oh, hey, Jake. Yeah, I'm right in the middle of my- You're just saying nice things about you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure. Let's see, can we show ours? All right. Um, Mariah. Let's see here. <clears throat> Let me show you my mom's. Yes. All right, Mariah. Go ahead and hold up the painting and I'll spotlight you here. All right, here oh, it is, Jeff. Wow. 
Nice job, Mariah. Oh, cool. Yeah, very nice job. Oh, that's the other person. Is that Ava? Ava, nice job. That's always, oh, are you looking at, uh, let's see here. Oh, it's Marie. Oh, Marie. oh, Mariah's Mariah's mom. Oh, that's right. It, it's yeah. I can't remember now. Let's see. Can we show ours, Jocelyn? Yes. Let's see here. Oh, here we go, Jeff. Here's a couple more. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, a second. They're adorable. You actually, do you want to know why I think they're adorable? Oh, will you go back to them, Jake, for a second? Yeah. Uh, hold them up again. Now, I don't know if you recognize that this or if you did this on purpose or not, but you, have you ever been to the fair and they do caricature drawings of people? You guys did kind of like a caricature of the fox, and he turned out fantastic. Very cool. Yeah, excellent job. Are you able to go on to gallery view, Jeff? Uh, yes. All right. So if anyone, that way you can kind of scan and look around and see uh, okay. maybe multiple at a time. Oh, is it Kiri? Kiri Voss? Kyrie. Beautiful, Voss. Oh. awesome <laughs> job. Yeah, home run. Oh man, look at Trista and Tina. Home runs. <laughs> Heather? Cool. Oh, come on, you guys. You're just showing off now. I'm starting to... Seriously, look at that. That is amazing. Oh, yeah. All right, so oops. let's see here. Robin, beautiful, beautiful, rich colors. Beth, beautiful. I, uh, Beth, what I'm talking about right here. That's what you accomplished. So that right there is an incredible art just because it's so powerful from the suggestion of it. Very cool. Megan, beautiful. I love the colors. I love the richness of the colors. Is it uh, Jalila? Jalila? Am I saying that right? Beautiful, Jalila. I love I love the fact that you divided it in half. And I love your fox. Can you hold it up one more time? I only get to see it for a brief second. Yep, beautiful. Uh, Julila, that is exactly, oh, and is this Gina? Oh, look at that. Yeah, you, you guys took, and just what everybody did, took the initiative just to be creative with it. And that's exactly what I'm hoping for in the class. So if you come in to try to paint what I'm painting, um, you're just duplicating what I'm doing. But if you take a little creative initiative, you're going to start discovering that you have a creative um, style and you keep developing that creative style. Excellent. So should we do a quick, a quick uh, 20 minute, we'll finish out the night. Oh, and, uh, I would love to see your digital painting, Barb. There we 
There it is. Can you see it, uh, Jeff? Um, let me scroll. Oh, yeah. Barb, um, you could easily have that printed. And what a fun card to make and send to friends. All right, should we try that quick sketch, the quick paint? If you, if you have um, another canvas, that's um, awesome. If you have, uh, if you don't have canvas and you see cardboard laying in the garbage, go grab it, we'll, we'll paint on that. Good night. Joanna, are you leaving now too? Are you gonna, okay, you're gonna do the quick paint? All right, let's get set up. We're gonna to have to be quick. Thanks for joining Jenny. I know I have some smaller canvases around here, but I can't find them. All right. See you next week, Heather, for the buffalo. Sorry, if anyone uh, doesn't already know, we're doing a buffalo next week. You will actually be uh, simpler than tonight. All right, do you want to do, you want to do 20 or do you want to do 15, Jeff? Um, let's try the 15. If nobody's ready, then we'll extend All right. it. But it'll be how we finish out the night. Perfect. All right, I'm ready. All righty. All right. Get set. And go. Whoops. Set the timer for 15 seconds. <laughs> oh. Time's up. <laughs>
All right, 10 minutes left.
All right, around four minutes left. Uh oh. <laughs> We're not afraid of you, Jake. One and a half minutes left. Are you scared now? Yes. That is one long minute, Jake. 
Remember, our timer's a little slower than most. Oh, that's right. You got to replace <laughs> the batteries on that. Do we want to set another? All right. How's it? Would everybody like five minutes? Because it's only been 15. Let's see what. Or is everyone? Done. Let's see if thumbs up. All right. Let's just let's do another five minutes. Starting now. If uh, another thing that you can try is if, if you just have something that you want to practice on, another canvas or a piece of cardboard or piece of wood, whatever, um, just keep just how we kept sketching out the wolves in the very beginning, or wolves, foxes in the very beginning. Um, do little foxes, maybe three, four inches high. Just keep repeating the fox. Maybe try, um, go on Pinterest or Google, find some other uh, positions of Fox and do the same thing. Do, do some quick sketches, but then quick sketches with uh, um, painting them. You will find these super quick sketches you get these, you get, you get animals with uh, more personality.
And again, um, the more you do them, the funner, the, the easier they get, but also the funner they get, and also your confidence in giving them that personality. Try to suggest the fox rather than trying to make, trying to paint a fox. Only apply paint that contributes to the suggestion of the fox. Because uh, sometimes we try so hard to um, paint or draw the fox and it becomes manufactured. But if we apply paint in a way that all we're doing, we're not painting a fox, we're just applying paint to suggest the fox. You'll also uh, come up with some great um, paintings that way. All right, that is five minutes. Cool. <laughs> So again, if this was your first class, it was a little bit more of a challenge, but everybody did incredible. Uh, I'm always super impressed. This formula of simplifying things to, it, to the point where it's just basic, it's just primary. And now um, just applying a few principles and how we can create some great art. So hopefully you keep taking um, the other classes. Uh, you are welcome back um, every Monday. We're gonna keep doing them for free. Um, but each time we do something new, cause we'll do um, landscapes, we'll do animals, um, chickens. Um, we have, we're, next week we're doing a buffalo, but you'll always learn something. And then you will start to um, feel confident and start applying it in a way that makes sense to you and your style of painting is gonna come out of it. So rather than trying to, um, trying to duplicate what I'm doing, you're gonna actually start discovering something better, something that's easier for you, what makes sense to you. And uh, again, that's when art becomes fun. Mm -hmm. All right, anybody want to show off their paintings before we cut out? Barb, awesome. You need to keep doing these and make cards. Beautiful, Joanna. Joanna, I think I like this one. I liked your first one a lot, but I really like this guy. And I know it's Mariah's daughter, but that is so adorable. Or no, this, is this Mariah's, Ava? Mariah's mom. Oh, Mariah's mom. <laughs> <laughs> yes, look at how adorable that Rel is. Relative. <laughs> yeah, and then look at um, oh. uh, Eileen and Robbins. Look at, they have two different color palettes. Look at how unique they are. On my screen, they're right next to each other, so it's kind of fun to make the comparison. Beautiful. So cool. Yeah, so you guys are already creating your style. So instead of trying to um, take these, Rochelle, not Rachel, Rochelle, beautiful. Connie, home run. Home run, Connie. Beautiful, um, Ada. No, it's Ada's mom. No, it is Ada. <laughs> look at you, can you, uh, beautiful, Jocelyn. So look at what you created in 20 minutes. You could do five of these in a, no, three of these in an hour. But after a while, you'll do five of them in an hour. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, look at Tina. Tina, think about like a little card. 
<laughs> Think about Foxy. it. Imagine making a little card like that and sending it to a friend. Yeah. Um, as you do keep as you keep developing your style, you'll you will start collecting paintings, and um, you need to find a way to um, to get rid of them. So they make great gifts. Ada, that is such an adorable fox. You did <laughs> such a good job. Awesome. Yeah, so hopefully we'll we'll see everybody back next week. Um, it is yeah. a buffalo. He, I think we're going to be doing him lay, lying down, so it kind of makes him easy to to paint. And so the the body of him is super easy to do. It's just a lump. But we'll just take a little time with the face, just a couple features that will really make him look like a one of those powerful buffaloes, and uh, we'll have a lot of fun with that also. So thank you, everybody. We will see you next week. All right. See everyone next week. Thanks for joining. Have a good rest of your night. Bye. Bye-bye.